Um, we'll see uh, at a much earlier stage the probably the fruits of robotics. And I'm thinking of um, just the technology that undertakes clinical and psychological monitoring. You know, we had some examples with machines, call them robotics if you like, that might um, monitor temperature and pulse and take blood pressures, etc. So a whole lot of technolo uh, technological innovations that assist us with clinical and psychological monitoring uh, in the home. Um, intelligent IT systems that lead to care interventions and they will possibly start to become more on a global scale. So you've got to start thinking what's the implication of that uh, in terms of uh, maybe risk management for yourself as um, individual practitioners and organisational uh, operators of um, community care. Um, cost cutting technologies, I think um, someone asked me during the afternoon tea break what sort of ethical issues does this arise uh, or arises from this discussion and um, I think there's quite a lot, I'll, I'll raise some but Tim certainly many, uh, began that discussion with uh, ethics committees and the role of ethics committees and looking at some of the early um, research uh, undertakings uh, in respect of technological innovations and what role they play on behalf of the community. Um, I'm more interested in cost-cutting technologies in the area of reprocessing. There's starting to be a lot of um, companies now that are putting reprocessed items on the market and um, I'm going to raise uh, very shortly some of the issues that I put under um, don't separate families and money, family members and money. And so we, me with my lawyer hat on, unfortunately, um, you know, as idealistic as I am, I'm very cynical at uh, what money does to families. And so when you're talking about people uh, in the community, particularly where the level of dementia is increasing, um, we have to be very careful about how we risk manage decision making processes and being a part of those decision making processes. Uh, there could be all sorts of um, irrational reasons why decisions are arrived at and you might be caught up in that, in terms of that process of what I'd call informed consent. And there isn't any other form of consent except informed consent, so it's a bit of a uh, it's a tautolo you know, tautology to talk about consent in any other way unless it was informed. And then finally, we didn't mention at all today anything to do with gene technologies. And I think uh, certainly probably it's still 10 years away, almost like robotics, where the implication of gene technology uh, innovations in healthcare in general, but certainly community care with seniors, um, will start to really show a difference. So gene technologies that prevent or treat conditions and um, again from my perspective I'm more interested in just reminding us all about what implications that has for the informed consent process, particularly in that growing uh, or the burgeoning issue of more dementia in the community. Um, substitute clinical decision making is an area that's already complex but if we look at it in the sense of um, reliance on technologies, it just makes it more complex and it's something we have to think through far more clearly. I always use hopefully a simple analogy of green, orange and red lights and certainly from my perspective all of this is an orange light area so it, it's something that uh, practitioners and uh, owners and operators of community care need to be very careful about how they go about developing their protocols and policies uh, by which they allow decisions to be made by family members and how you accept that and what evidence you've got for that. Um, I think Bruce also mentioned that um, staff ratings re-robots uh, were always a little bit uh, more critical, if you like, than um, residents or community uh, people in the community, recipients of care. Um, and I think that's important in terms of understanding what that might mean for you as uh, employers. Um, we can then move into uh, data sharing issues, the aggregation of data uh, that may not be de-identified, um, used for product feedback to manufacturers, uh, hospitals on effectiveness of technologies etc. The ability for technologies to be able to allow that to occur so much more quickly just requires you to be absolutely aware of that in terms of how you risk manage those processes. Um, Again, I think it was Tim who raised uh, the issue of the GPS watch and um, privacy issues, re treatment regimes and technology choices. So here's something as simple as a GPS watch, very good objectives in terms of trying to monitor a person within a particular uh, acceptable and appropriate boundary that they've even consented to be monitored within that area. And yet, um, Tim mentioned that part of that process was a listening in 
uh, opportunity. And um, so it just highlights again some of the issues that would have to definitely be thought through in respect of appropriate consent processes. Um, although it's an issue that um, comes up ethically and the insurers tell us it's not a big problem, I'm still a little bit sceptical, but some of the um, implications of gene technologies and what that means for insurance, I don't think have been thought through clearly yet. So I think that's something that we need to be thinking about as a part of all of these innovations. Um, there also may be some unforeseen long-term clinical consequences of some of those gene technologies that uh, we may or may not know about at the time that we start to um, intervene in those processes. Um, infection control was mentioned today, just something as simple as our lovely little seal over there or um, everyone hugging the robot. It might seem pretty mundane and pedestrian, but um, in terms of with my lawyer hat on trying to look after you, that's something that's probably going to cause you more problems on a day-to-day -day basis than some of the more complex ones that I'm talking about. Um, and finally, and the other one that I'm not pleased about, but fortunately I'm on the risk management and commercial and corporate side, but some of my colleagues who spend all their time in litigation, um, I think you need to be reminded that both plaintiff litigation and class actions are increasing, and particularly as this particular pool becomes more of interest to plaintiff litigators, uh, you will find that they will watch this space with an interest in a vengeance. So, um, and particularly now there's listed companies that will fund class actions. So you just need to be aware that um, although at the moment, uh, and I'm not being cynical, but we may see mistakes, just general clinical negligence mistakes by some of our employees in the community uh, and in residential care. Uh, that may pass under the radar of lawyers and coroners at this point of time, as this market becomes more of interest to plaintiff lawyers in particular, you're just going to have to be very, very careful from a risk management perspective. And just on the, the broad area of um, negligence and uh, innovative technology, um, I think we've just got to, and, and it's you as a recipient, so on one level, the manufacturer and distributor uh, would be the first port of call, but in terms of you as an acquirer of technology to assist you delivering services to consumers, I think you need to be a little bit um, comfortable yourself at what the level of evidence has been in terms of how those technologies have been put on the market and what they claim they do. Um, again, sorry Tim to keep uh, referring to you, but you mentioned, and again, I think it's because of your particular cohort with you know, dementia-specific uh, orientations. You know, technology where um, there's a lot of false positives and negatives that creates all sorts of issues for the marketplace. And um, technologies that fail, I, I think it was Bruce that mentioned uh, that Charlie went crazy for the first half of one of your phases. And, uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Had some, had, had some system failures and um, all I'm saying is that uh, we have to be careful that, um, that we're, so, software, software upsets, something a couple of Panadol might have cured, but um, how we respond to warnings that uh, innovative technologies might give out, just another area that we have to have on our radar. So I'll leave it at that.